Nobunaga is a 14-year-old boy heir to the Oda clan, but everyone only recognizes him as the dumbest idiot to ever walk on earth. His clan hates him and despises him, despite him being their future leader, giving him several betrayal slaps in the face he needs to become the strongest warlord that ever existed. For the past almost 70 years Japan has been plagued by a cycle of several civil wars and violence. Our story starts one morning in Nagoya Castle. 14-year-old Oda Nobunaga wakes up from his sleep and hears his retainer, Tsunyoki, calling him out. Everyone despises him because of his carefree personality and tendency to only speak the truth. He's always seeking trouble and constantly taking risks to achieve his goals, getting nicknamed the fool. The two ride toward the island of Tsushima. There, they meet their friends, who are planning to steal a package from one of the carts that the dock crew is stockpiling. The group creates a distraction and makes off with the package unnoticed. One of his friends, Rokiru, gives him a token in return for his help and the young lord and his retainer leave the island. As soon as they arrive back at the castle, Hurate Masahide, the senior retainer, confronts him about his possession of the rare token that Rokiru gave him a few days ago. Apparently, his younger brother, Nabukatsu, snitched on him but luckily for Nobunaga, his elder stepbrother arrives and saves him from the situation. Later that day, the two go back to Tsushima to tell Rokiru that they've been found out and that they'll have to stop what they're doing. But Rokiru asks him one last time to help them out. But before they can even start their mission, unknown soldiers arrive and attack them, knocking Nobunaga out. Nobunaga wakes up and upon opening the door, he sees a monk named Takujin Ashu, telling him that the ship that they planned to steal from had already sailed and his friends were captured. Without so much as a second thought, Nobunaga and Tsunioki rush to Furuwatari Castle to ask his father, Lord Nobuhide, to release their friends. Nobuhide plans to execute the rats that are stealing his goods in Tsushima. He uses a musket, firing a single shot near the prisoners to show his intention. He tells Nobunaga that he's his heir and he can't have ties with thieves, telling him that he'll have to end himself if he continues to befriend them. Rokiru laughs as Nobuhide advises his son, telling the Lord that he never met Nobunaga before. Just as Nobuhide's about to pull the trigger, Nobunaga plugs the musket with his finger, warning his father that blocking the gun's tip will cause it to explode in his face. But his father argues that Nobunaga will also get hurt, challenging his resolve. Nobunaga is not swayed and with a fiery look in his eyes, he tells his father that he would rather get himself injured than watch his friends get killed. He claims that rats know when a ship is about to sink, and the fact that the rats had infested the ship means it's prospering. The excellent words that came out of Nobunaga's mouth managed to convince his father and he laughs the execution off. He assigns his son to be in charge of the so-called rats and even gives him the musket as a gift. After his father leaves, Nobunaga falls to his knees, shaken with relief. He thought he was getting himself killed, but his reckless brave actions and words worked out in the end. It's time for Nobunaga's arranged marriage. The monk tells him he's going to marry the daughter of Seidu Dawson, Lady Kichu. This shocks the young lord as it means his father-in-law is going to be the Viper of Minu. Nobunaga weds Lady Kichu. Later that night, Takujin Ashu and tells Nobunaga that Kichu is an assassin. The monk reveals that this isn't Kichu's first marriage and that whatever path they choose, it's gonna be hard for the Oda clan. Later, Nobunaga finds Kichu with her attendant and invites her to accompany him on a walk. The newly married couple arrives at the location and bluntly, Nobunaga tells her that his death will likely cause more trouble for the Minu clan than good. Hearing this, Kichu points her dagger at her own throat, but Nobunaga disarms her, telling her that she shouldn't kill herself just because she failed to kill him. He adds that she should value her life more than what her father thinks of her. Before the night is over, Nobunaga takes her in as his official wife, securing an alliance that will benefit both clans. Tsunioki confronts Nobunaga and asks him to visit his sick father, but Nobunaga argues that his visit might cause his father to lose all will to fight his illness. A couple of months later, Nobunaga's father succumbs to his sickness and dies. Nobunaga doesn't attend the funeral. For the past years, he's been realizing his position. He's now the leader of the clan, and tries to think about how he can take care of his people. But his family doesn't know about his thoughts, resulting in a bigger hate toward him. Even by this brother, Nobunaga gets an invitation to meet with Seidu Dawson, Kichu's father, in a secure location. He learns that Kichu was raised in a ninja village, and was only revealed to be the viper's daughter when she's come at the right age. Nobunaga and Tsunioki discuss their strategy for surviving the meeting giving Mitatashi, one of Nobunaga's retainers, 600 soldiers to command and protect him. Later, Kichu's elder brother, Yashitatsu, sends her a gift, a kimono with a peacock design. 
everything's finally ready and the day of the meeting arrives. Nobunaga appears in front of Seidu Dawson for the first time, looking fresh and bussin faux real. Nobunaga tells him about his policies and assures Dawson that it'll be beneficial if he allies with him. He then summons his wife Kichu, dressed in the peacock-designed kimono. Yashitatsu rises and scolds Kichu, telling her that peacocks symbolize disrespect as they are the natural enemy of vipers. And in doing so, she basically presented herself as the enemy of her father, the viper. Nobunaga counters Yashitatsu's argument by telling Dawson that the peacock is bowing to him, meaning that even his enemies pay respect to the viper. The viper is impressed and didn't expect Nobunaga to handle the situation that effectively. Kichu notices an assassin nearby and quickly shields her husband from the assassin's sight by pretending to dance. The assassin sets the arrow loose but misses Nobunaga. Yashitatsu orders his soldiers to engage, descending on Nobunaga, but Tashi's company of musketeers arrives on time, checkmating the viper's forces. The conflict ends with Nobunaga forgiving the viper, and the two form an alliance, swearing to protect each other's backs. Nobunaga sends letters to his brother, longing for a reply and to see him. He gets a letter back, asking him if he wants anything for his upcoming birthday. But before he can respond, the son of the Lord Protector of Oeri comes to his castle, asking for shelter. Nobunaga's duty bound to protect the child and so he lay siege on Kiyasu, his principal lion's headquarters. The fight drags on and is stuck at a stalemate for quite some time, so he sends a letter asking for aid from his brother, Nobukatsu. However, the fight drags on and they haven't received a word from Nobukatsu. He's about to retreat, however, his brother arrives and provides the support that Nobunaga desperately needs. With their troops reinforced, they defeat the traitors and take Kiyasu Castle as their new headquarters. A few weeks after the battle, Nobunaga receives word that Hidetaka, his younger brother was accidentally killed on the hunting grounds. Nobukatsu rallies his soldiers to swear revenge, asking for Nobunaga's assistance. But help didn't come, Nobunaga is too focused on his job as the clan leader, and has no time to deal with decisions based on emotions. A few weeks later, a village head arrives at Kiyasu and asks for Nobunaga's help. Nobukatsu got tired of Nobunaga's decisions and decided to raise arms around their village. The villagers are afraid that they'll get invaded, or worse, pillaged and wiped of the living land. Nabukatsu's forces start raiding the village, taking in their crop harvests and food supplies. Nabunaga appears and orders Nabukatsu's forces to retreat, but the soldiers instead charge forward to kill him. With only 700 soldiers, Nabunaga has to fend off Nabukatsu's army of 18 -0. Sunioki leads the charge of Nobunaga's troops, inspiring them to attack head-on. Meanwhile, Nobunaga faces off with Michitomo, one of Nobukatsu's retainers. He tells Nobunaga that they aren't going to leave Ori's defense to someone like him. And so Nobunaga casts aside his emotions and clashes swords with the retainer, killing him in their second joust. With the death of Michitomo, the enemy troops scatter like flies and flee the battlefield. Nobukatsu sees his brother and charges forward raising his blade in one hand. Nobunaga shouts and asks why are they acting like enemies, but his brother doesn't stop his advance. But before Nobukatsu can get close, Tashi hurls spears in his direction and startles the horse enough to throw the estranged lord off of it, allowing Nobunaga to arrest him. Their mother begs Nobunaga to be lenient with his sentence, but Nobunaga has already considered his brother's decisions and decides to take take the best action for the clan. And so, he proceeds to forgive him for all his crimes. Later, Nobunaga asks Kichu how she's feeling. She confesses that her being with him doesn't feel right and argues that Kitsuno is far suited to be his bride, leaving the castle in the dead of the night. A few days later, Kitsuno, the lady Nobunaga is smitten with, arrives at the castle, revealing that Kichu asked her to be Nobunaga's concubine. Kichu is infertile, which poses a problem to the future of the clan, as heirs are needed. Not even a week has passed since Kitsuno's arrival when Tsunioki suddenly gets captured. Nobunaga rallies his forces to rescue Tsunioki and along the way, they meet Shibata Katsui, one of Nobukatsu's retainers, telling them that they've been waiting for him. Nobukatsu appears and assures Nobunaga that they haven't taken Tsunioki's head yet, asking him to come and see it for himself. Nobunaga confronts his brother and Nobukatsu replies by asking why didn't he attend the funerals of both their late father and younger brother. Nobunaga tells him he just did what his father would do as the clan leader, but the answer doesn't satisfy his enraged brother. He raises his katana and fights Nobunaga, telling him he deprived him of his warrior's pride by giving him no punishment of any kind. 
but Nobunaga tells him that he shouldn't die for committing a mistake. The two clash swords as Nobukatsu berates his brother for reducing him to a shameful life as a traitor. Nobukatsu then incites Nobunaga's anger by telling him Tsunioki's dead. This enraged Nobunaga, so he unsheathes his tanto and stabs Nobukatsu. Then Tsunioki and Shibata arrive. Nobukatsu asks Nobunaga to blame him for everything and then he dies. Shibata then tells Nobunaga what happened and why Nobukatsu chose to meet his end instead of living peacefully. A year later and Kitsuno gave birth to Nobunaga's first son, Nobutada. One afternoon, a traveling monk visits the castle and offers Nobunaga his exotic wares. One of the wares is an incense-producing item that relieves stress. Nobunaga inhales the smoke and falls unconscious. As the monk's about to strike, Tashi catches him in the act and wrestles him. In a struggle to find out what the monk's intentions, he accidentally kills the monk. The next day, Tashi explains to Nobunaga what happened, presenting a hairpin as the monk's weapon. But after arguing over the lack of evidence, Tashi voluntarily leaves the castle to prevent Nobunaga from taking the blame for the death. Takujin tells Nobunaga that Tashi's words might actually be true and the traitor is Shiba Yashikane, a boy that Nobunaga saved before. Nobunaga confronts the Lord Protector, who later admits to the crime. The banishment reaches the Shogunate, asking Nobunaga to explain himself in person. And so Nobunaga and his cloaked guards travel to the capital to seek an audience with the Shogun. But along the way, they encounter nothing but assassins. As soon as they are granted an audience, a band of assassins emerges from the street, cornering them. It's a trap, and the assassins charge forward with the cloaked guards intercepting them. Just as the assassins surround Nobunaga and he seems to be overwhelmed, the missing Kichu appears and saves him. They swiftly deal with the assassins, killing them one by one and turning the tide. Kichu declares that her name is now Ryijiru while Nobunaga acknowledges her strength and invites her to be part of his guards. The group leaves the capital and heads back home. All of the plots that have been happening since they left for the capital were traced back to Imagawa Yashimoto, a general that has been planning to attack Oeri for a long time. A few days before the invasion, Ryijiru informs Nobunaga that she spotted 10,000 soldiers in Mikawa. Nobunaga and his forces rally at Zenshouji Temple, putting up banners to bluff his enemies that he has a bigger force. However, Ryijiru reports that there are now 40,000 men that Imagawa has at his disposal. But Nobunaga stays positive that they can defeat their enemies by combining their remaining forces. Due to Imagawa's large force, the gate castles have been lost. Nobunaga goes missing and Tsunioki asks Ryijiru to help him find their lord. Tashi later finds Nobunaga in the Atsuda Shrine, who is planning to commit seppuku as an act of sacrifice to save his people. Tashi doesn't catch on and announces that he is ready to lay down his life for his master. Tsunioki and Ryijiru, and later Shibata's forces, arrive and echo Tashi's words, asking Nobunaga to not give up, encouraging him to fight the enemy despite their impossible odds of winning, because every single one of them were willing to lose their lives in service of Nobunaga. Nobunaga comes back to himself when he sees luck playing on their side as rain was imminent in the air. He forsakes his plan to sacrifice himself and leads his troops in an unflinching charge towards Imagawa's camp, the troops of whom had grown lax in the rain and had settled down to rest. The attack surprises everyone, including Imagawa's guards, and the enemies are promptly defeated. Nobunaga's triumph over Imagawa becomes one of the most important turning points that mark his first step toward the unification of the country. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.